All right, welcome to Q Live, our very first uh, interview here and sitting with Joe Bowler, who just did, finished a great keynote at Q17. Congratulations. Thank you, Chris. Thank it was, you. It was well received. Uh -huh. There were people crying and cheering and all the, all the stuff we would expect. Yes. They get emo that's an emotional like. thing. It is a very emotional thing, yeah. <laughs> it is. Well, many people have gone their whole life think, being told they can't do math and... Um, you know, it makes them feel bad. It makes them feel bad at many times throughout their life. So when you change that message with people, it's pretty liberating. Yeah. Well, I think, too, here at Q, you know, we talk a lot about innovation. We talk a lot about um, different ways to use technology and so on. But to have that a very clear message around math and curriculum and, and how that fits into the picture, I think, is really powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I really think we need to change kids' ideas about math in particular. That's, one, that's the subject they have most fixed mindset thinking about. But... Everything I shared really applies to every subject across the curriculum. Yeah, so I want to—I want, definitely want to get to that. Um, th one thing, though, I just wanted to give you kudos. I mean, um, disclaimer: I, I am on Joe's advisory group, um, which is fun and great, and so I've had some insights to some of the great work you're doing. But three million monthly active users—I mean, yeah. that's amazing. Yes, I mean, it's huge. Uh -huh. you could you ever have dreamed of having no, that many no, people excited about dreamed. mindset and math? We never dreamed about that. And, um, Why do you think that is? Why do you think it's it resonates? Well, it's partly because, I mean, our mission at UCube is to get research out to teachers. Mm -hmm. We have amazing research. We know how to teach well. We know what inspires students. But it's generally locked up in research journals that teachers mm -hmm. don't have access to, don't have time. So we're translating that into things yeah. that are really popular with teachers. And the large number of people coming to us are coming to us really because we give out free lessons for kids, free videos, and they try them. And students get really inspired, and so they come back. And, and it's just amazing. If you haven't been to ucubed.org, uh, there really is so much there. I mean, I'm, a, I'm amazed. I come back m m kind of monthly or so, and there's, there always is so much more content there. Who is creating that content? I mean, she is. Kathy, <laughs> who you can't see off camera, is amazing, yes. Um, well, we're uh, a very small team, actually. There's uh, three full-time people, four maybe, um, and one person's entirely devoted to research because we're also an ongoing research mm -hmm. center. So actually people getting out content on the site is uh, you know, a very small number of people. And a lot of people come to us saying, please do more in kindergarten and please do more in grade one. Right. And we're, so we're just a tiny team <laughs> right. and we're trying really hard to get out as much as we can. Yeah, it's very cool and it's high quality stuff. So I want to ask you about some of the things related to the content and some of the themes from your keynote. In particular, um, I think that one of the messages that resonates with a lot of people is around mistakes. Mm -hmm. And you showed mm -hmm. that slide about how it's not just about about um, making the mistake, but also the realization of the mistake mm -hmm. that you're gonna get this twofer. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that I'm curious about is how can teachers and educators help kids have that realization without going overboard where it's an aha moment, right? Mm -hmm. There's a fine line between realizing you made a mistake and dinging a kid for a mistake. And I'm wondering how we facilitate that. Hey, it's a great question. and. Um, a lot of people come to our site, they realize mistakes are powerful, they communicate to kids, mistakes are really powerful, they're really great, but then kids get graded down every time they make a right. mistake. Right. And, uh, you know, every time they take a test when they're graded. And then graded. it's done. So they make that, a mistake and nothing else. Right. And th so that is a counter message. Mm. And giving those mixed messages to kids, mistakes are good, but I'm going to grade you down if you make one, um, is worse than not giving any message at all, actually. So. We want to give kids the message. It's really important that they understand mistakes are really good for your brain. It's when your brain is growing. Struggles really good for your brain when you really find something difficult. But we also need to free kids from those really constraining practices, grading, testing right. constantly. So what's a practical way a teacher can do that? I mean, some people will hear that and they'll say, okay, we're just gonna get rid of quizzes. It's uh -huh. But it's more than just getting rid of the quizzes, right? There are different things that give kids negative messages about mindset and their mm -hmm. learning. Um, so grading turns out to be unhelpful when we grade kids. Uh, it causes achievement to go down, it shows in research. And if teachers are in the position they can get rid of grading, that is wonderful and I would recommend doing that and replacing it instead with giving kids feedback. Mm -hmm. um, many teachers are not in that position. They're made to grade by mm -hmm. districts, by schools. So then we need to change grading and I recommend to teachers that instead of grading correctness and answers, we can grade kids on the, way they, the ways they participate. Do they ask good questions? Mm. Do they connect ideas? Do they support each other? And so even more, I mean, the typical thing in math is, right, show me your 
your work, right? Mm -hmm. So more obviously the process is important, yeah. but not to just grade the process, actually grade their processing, right? Yeah, and how they interact in class mm -hmm. and you know, whether they're asking questions, whether they're seeing ideas in different ways. And so we end up, somebody um, uh, may be like a fast procedural thinker, but that wouldn't get them a high grade necessarily because that's just a piece of something. And right. really what we're looking for is all the different ways they participate in math. The, the important things like reasoning and being creative right. with maths and seeing ideas in different ways. And, and related to that, I mean, I, I personally, the message of let's get rid of speed math resonates. I have a daughter who you've met. Mm -hmm. uh, she came to one of your, your workshops at Stanford and she's a classic slow math kid. Yeah. But she understands it deeply, conceptually. Which is really important. But yeah. she gets huge anxiety when mm -hmm. that test comes in and she has from day one. And we've had conversations with teachers and at most, they give a little extra time or come back at, at lunch, but usually they say, toughen, toughen up. Oh, yeah. Like, you just got to do it. Right. So how do we get past this cultural, like, just know, embedded so concept of speed math? I think one way to get past it, a really important way, is for people to see and understand that speed does not equate to intelligence. Yeah. Speed does not equate to better math learning. Um, I think it's really great to bring out these top field medal winning mathematicians who will say, I am very slow mm -hmm. with math. Um, and I think people also need to understand that when we give people time pressure, we na now know it, you know, it shuts down part of the brain, it mm -hmm. um, stops them being able to come up with creative thinking. So I was talking to a parent last week and she said, um, my daughter's in geometry in high school. She's been failing, 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 getting D's and F's um, because she works slowly. And I s talked to the teacher and I said, she's a slow, deeper thinker. So he started to say to her, you can have as long as you like on tests. And suddenly she's getting 97% on all these tests. Right. Yeah. So Same thing happened with my daughter. We just have to dial back on this idea yeah. that speed is important in and, subjects. And, and you know better than I do how all these things are connected, right? So high school teachers say, well, it has to be fast because you're going to take the SAT, right? Exactly. And then middle school teachers yes. say, but your high school teachers require right. this, right? So it, a lot of ways we have to free the teachers and change the teaching mindset here at every level. Yeah, really. How do we do, I mean, we're talking about math mindsets for kids. What about math mindsets for teachers? Yeah, absolutely. And first of all, like teachers themselves have to have a growth mindset about themselves. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to encourage students if you yourself think, I can't do math. And um, so that's really important. But um, it's what we really want to do is have teachers feel that they can do anything with students, that they can engage students in rich conversations, that they haven't got speed pressure, like mm -hmm. the teachers themselves also suffer from that speed pressure. But one thing I see in teachers that I think is not good is exactly what you said. Um, my daughter was in a great elementary school, no grade. She got to fifth grade, and the fifth grade teacher said, well, I'm going to get you ready for high school, exactly. so I'm going to start giving you grades. Right. So her mindset dipped straight right. away. She started to stop caring about, she used to really care about the ideas. She shifted to caring about the grade. Exactly. Um, so that happens all the time. We need to stop that. But the other thing is the college board is listening. They have just um, doubled the amount of time people have. I mean, it's still not good enough, but mm -hmm. on SATs, they are starting Great. to listen and understand it's not about speed. But yeah, we want to, as a teacher, you want your environment to be the very best you can give to kids. Right. Even if they're going on to high school and experiencing something you, that isn't as good, keep doing what you know to be right for kids. Yeah, and I would wager also having those conversations at each, the matriculation conversations. Oftentimes we say, I, I taught middle school. Oh, well, they require this in high school without yes. really talking to the high school teachers. Do you require that? Right, and right. the same thing at other levels. And I think just having that conversation could, could get us halfway yeah, there. Definitely. Um, so um, one of the things that um, uh, I'm curious about is, and, and I think you, you get to this sometimes in your books as well, but You've, you've been this great evangelist for um, math mindsets over the last few years, and people are listening now and so on. But I'm curious, um, for your own growth mindset, mm. what, what motivates you? What excites you right now about learning new things and, and that, that you're constantly seeking new answers to? Well, I think um, over recent years, there's been a lot of amazing science coming out, particularly from brain science. And 
um, neuroscience and incredible things about the ways our brains work. It's quite stunning, I think, for anyone. And what I understand is when we get that science out to teachers and to kids, it changes classrooms. Mm. I still, on a daily basis, go into classrooms and see kids who are held up by this idea that I'm not a math person. Mm -hmm. We had 120 middle school girls in Stanford on Friday. So many of them just kept saying, I can't do math, I can't do math. Um, so when I see that all the time, and I know that these kids and teachers' ideas can be changed, mm -hmm. that's what motivates me to just, and every time, I'm reading a great book at the moment, every time I read new research, I'm thinking, oh wow, this could be really helpful for teachers, and um, so yeah, that's what keeps me going well, doing the, this. The translating is very needed and very appreciated, and, and you guys do it very, very well. So, the going back to maybe some closing thoughts here for yeah. folks, if we were to get super pragmatic, and we talked about three things. What's the first thing a teacher should do to get mm -hmm, started? Mm -hmm. So we've thought about this at Ucubed, our center, and we thought, how can we really help teachers just start this and try it? Mm -hmm. And we developed something that's called the Week of Inspirational Maths. And um, it's a week of maths lessons. We now have two years of it, where everything is planned out for any K-12 teacher. The whole lesson is planned out. There's a video for students to start it off about mindset. It's open creative maths. And we say to teachers, please just try this. Just take it into your classroom and try it. And we hear great things from teachers about that. And that starts them on the journey, I think, when they start to see, oh, I can give kids different messages. It changes them. I can teach maths in this open, creative way. Um, now, we want to give teachers more help than that. Mm -hmm. We have teachers who say to us, oh my gosh, we did the week of inspirational maths, all the kids' lights went on. Right. And then the following week, we brought out the textbooks and the <laughs> lights went we went out right again. back to what we were doing yeah. before, right? Um, so we're trying and we're actually working on curriculum materials across K-8 that, that's like the week of maths but go across the whole year. Right. But um, we hope that teachers in trying these ideas, it ignites a little spark for them that they can start um, maybe taking those textbooks and making them better. We give a lot of advice in my book and um, about how to take your boring standard textbook page and make it really exciting. Cool. So that's the teacher side. Of course, supporting teachers are school leaders, school administrators. What's the first thing they should be doing? So if you're a leader of a school, I think you should uh, go to UCube and take our student online class. Really? It's, take the student one? Yes. It's okay. Six. Why? 15 minute sessions, uh -huh. it has all the important information, brain science and mindset that administrators need. Mm -hmm. It's really quick. Um, we also have a page of papers and uh, different ideas that are in written textbook form, mm -hmm. but uh, written form, word form, but I really recommend that course. Many administrators have taken it, many parents have taken it, and they've been really pleased to get the idea. And the idea is if they take it, they're experiencing it, and the light bulb goes off? Is that kind yes. of the idea? Yes, and cool. they will realize what math really is uh -huh. and um, be better able to help teachers. Cool. So the last one is parents. parents What's yes. the first thing parents should do to, to develop a math mindset with their so kids? First of all, um, parents should know that nobody's born as a math person and they should never give that message to their kids. They should never say to their children, I was bad at math at school. Turns out just saying that to our kids causes their achievement mm -hmm. to go down. Um, we should always say to kids, math, yay, you know, I'm really excited to be doing this math, even if you have to fake it. <laughs> it's a really good message. So I always be excited about maths. And never give them speed pressure. Throw out the flashcards mm -hmm. and all of these timed pressure points. And instead, try and help students to understand that learning math is a process and it's about ideas and depth. Mm -hmm. And have you, have you heard any stories of parents getting so excited that they're going to the school as change agents saying, hey, we got to get on board? Definitely, or yeah. We, we, we do quite a lot of parent talks and parents read the book. And um, we've had a lot of parents who are now advocates, you know, for this different type of mathematical experience. Mm -hmm. And we had a, I had a parent in my office last week saying, can I make videos? I want to help. We want to cool. help with this math revolution. So That's awesome. Yeah. So I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you one sort of techie question. So we're here, we're here at a group of innovators, right? Uh -huh. Especially around technology, although we're having some tech trouble back here, which is always <laughs> fun. Um, but you know, what is the connection you think between your work and technology? Is there a role for technology to play in helping either to develop the math mindset or maybe mm -hmm. even in, in deep, challenging problems for slow math? Yeah, well, we want kids to experience open, creative, visual math in, with depth. 
Um, so technology can really help with that. Now, I have to say most math apps are really low quality. They're, speed, They're drill and kill, drill. speed oriented. Yeah. They may have fluffy pandas, yeah, but the goal is names. still the same to <laughs> do things fast with arithmetic. Yeah. So, but um, technology can invite kids into that lovely visual world where they can actually move things and um, see things differently. So I'm very excited by the good mathematical applications that are out there and um, we should definitely have them in classrooms. When we taught middle schoolers last summer, they all had an iPad, they were filming things, they were looking up things whenever they didn't know something. We said, Google it, find uh -huh. out. Um, so yeah, the technology. And are there any resources on YouCubed where you've, yes. you've looked at some of the different applications and there so on? There is, thank you okay. for asking that. There is, a, there is a section of our site called Math Apps and Games where we sort of uh, recommend the ones we think are really good for maths learning. Awesome, that's great. Well, thank you so much for not only joining us here at QLive, but also spreading the message of math mindsets to everybody at Q. Thanks, um, Chris. It's, it's been great having you, and we Thank really you. hope that people check out ucube.org and continue to look at all the great resources that uh, Joe and the team have put up there for you all. So thanks for joining us. Thank Thanks you. again for uh, uh, catching us here at Q Live, and we'll see you soon. Bye.